So I've done a bunch of videos so far on jQuery animation, and this is probably the most advanced animation I've done yet. Let's take a look at the animation. Okay, so you can see what happened. A, a square started from the top left corner, bounced as if it was a ball into position, and then grew out. I'll show you one more time. Doon, 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 okay, and this is actually typeable information, right? And you click to go away. So, how do we do this? Start off with, I'm going to be using a function I wrote in the last, uh, or a jQuery plugin that I wrote in the last uh, video, which is animate out. Basically, it does a lot of calculation to animate an object outward in either the x direction, the y direction, or the center direction. Okay, so I'm going to be using that. I've made a function uh, that dark box function is now actually really nice. So let me explain line by line what's going on here, uh, and I'm going to skip ahead when I get to the switch statement. So I've already explained this once in another video, but I'll explain it again. This is shorthand notation for if else. So I'm testing if this is true. So if there's an attribute with, so I'll actually show you the other page where this div, this hidden div is. Okay, there's no width and height given. Okay, so it's going to use the width and height, the, the very minimum width and height of the div. I can give a height and width here. So if I do height equals, quote, 200 and width equals, quote, 300, and I test it again, it should still work. Dun, dun, dun. Okay? So it's just a different size. So let's take a look at uh, basically what's going on here. So let's uh, undo that because I like it better without. So uh, this is saying if the width is set as an attribute, then set w to that. If it's not, set w to the div.width. Same thing with the height. Then we're going to create a box, and we're going to add the class dark cover, which basically is a fixed black box with an opacity. All right, we're going to add that box to the page. We're going to prepend, which is going to put it right before the right after the body tag, the very first element after the body tag, and then we're going to fade it in fast. Okay. Next, we're going to create a content box, which is that box of content. It's going to be a div, and we're going to fill it with the HTML of the HTML of the div that was passed in. Okay, so you might be wondering how the div is passed in. Well, it's called by the function that I clicked on. So if I go to the head, uh, not the head, if I go to the top file here, you see that here's the link uh, right here. It's given the class dark box, all right, and it's... Uh, it has a reference, use this div, which is the same as use this div down here. That's how it knows. And there's already a function up here in document.ready that gets all those divs and hides them and then passes, calls darkbox for each one of those. Okay? And again, already explained in the last video. So we'll add that dark content class, we'll add it in, and then we'll add a click attribute to the black box. If you click it, then fade everything out. All right? Now, here's the nitty gritty you choose your type and I've been just creating types all day and I'm gonna give this out and people can create their own types as they will. It's basically uh, it, it's basically a wrapper for this dark box with custom animations. So I'll explain a simple one, drop y. Let's take a look at what drop y looks like. All right, This is the very first function. If we take a look at it, drop y, okay so it was really fast, but it basically it uh, dropped a box down as it was growing. So uh, let's actually not use drop y, and we'll use no. You know what? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. So basically, we're setting, and again, I'm going to go through this really quick because I've already gone through it. Okay. We're getting the uh, the x position, and then we're getting the y position. Again, these calculations I've done by testing. We're setting the CSS to start with. And we're setting the width and height to start with as well. Okay, so we're telling it where to start. And then we're going to use the animate function. We're going to animate the y value, and uh, we're going to animate the top value and the left value, and the width, okay, all at the same time. Uh, actually, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the width should not be done here. I believe. <clears throat> I think we should do that, but... I'll leave that for another video. All right, so animate these parameters, 500 milliseconds. Again, I have easing installed, and you install easing by simply having easing JavaScript file. Go search for it. And now, 
the animate function takes one final parameter, which is a callback function. So once this animate function is finished, it's going to call my animate out function. And that's the, uh, that's the plugin that I've made below. First, you pass in the type of easing you want this to have. You pass in the end width you want it to have, the end height you want it to have, okay? The direction, which is going to be Y, X, or center. The speed at which this animation happens, and then the ending padding, okay? Because each div is going to have its own padding depending on how you want to do it. So that's basically how that works. Now, let me show you how that bouncing ball works, okay? It's a little bit different. Same basic procedure up to about here. First thing we do here is we animate the x value, okay? And now instead of passing in quote parameters, we're going to pass in an object parameters because we need to use the q option, okay? So we need to set q to false. If we don't set the q to false, then uh, well, then this is what happens. So we'll actually we'll set q to true, and take and we actually need to set it to bounce left up at the top, right here, okay? And we'll take a look at what happens. It goes to the right, then it comes down, bounces, and then opens. Okay? So you can see that the effect is not correct because it's it's not it is queued up. We need it to execute at the same time. We need this animate and this animate to work at the same time. The way the bounce works is uh, you ease to the le you e you go on the x axis at a linear rate. At the same time, you animate the uh, y-axis at a bounce rate. So the uh, so the x value is going straight down like this, right? And then the uh, I'm sorry, the y value is going straight across like this. At the same time, while the x value, okay, is bouncing, which is the x value is doing this. So you can see how that creates the final effect that we're going for. Again, after that last function is done, okay. You call the animate out function and you pass it its parameters. And this one's going to animate out from the center because that just is what it does. Different speed, and there's your padding. So that's basically how you can achieve a bouncing effect, such as, well, I guess I have to change it. Q to false save. Refresh. That's how you achieve a bouncing square effect in jQuery.